Do you want me to do it for you? Let's okay. do it, yeah. Okay, hello. I would always introduce myself as, hello, Michael Hill, Julo. It's perfect, that's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Man, I've enjoyed making two sketches. We have visited all kinds of artist spaces, from an Auckland comic book shop with Mikel Mollipola, to Materia Two Days, Dunedin Art School workspace, and Sharon Murdoch's leafy Wellington backyard. But something tells me today's episode is going to be a particularly buzzy one. Hi. Good morning. Toby, nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having us on your boat. <laughs> Thank you. It's the first time we've ever filmed one of these on a boat, and I suspect uh-huh. Uh-huh. possibly one of the last times. <laughs> but it's a pleasure. Perfect Auckland day. Yeah. No wind, which is um, slightly unusual. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. So have you got any ideas of what you'd like to draw today? Uh, I haven't really, no. Okay. Well, I was wondering if... I mean, today we're obviously going to be talking about about uh, Michael Hill, cartoonist. Yes. I was thinking that I might do a... Do a Michael Hill cartoonist portrait? That sounds a great idea. But maybe you could draw me as a jeweller. I'm not sure if that, you, can, you can picture that, how that would go. Well, uh, we could, I could think about that. That would be an unusual one, but I could do, actually. Uh, I'm going to have to look at you a little side on, unfortunately, which is, uh, there, there, that's, okay. what I want. that's what I want, that's what I want, that's the angle I want. I think it might made you look too much of a bruiser, really. I don't think this <laughs> looked like you at all, but however, that's uh, that's life. Okay, that's all good. That's all good. Uh, um, hey. Okay, so most people would know you as as Michael Hill jeweller, but today we're talking to you in your capacity also as Michael Hill cartoonist, and then you're also Sir Michael as well. How do you usually introduce yourself to people? Oh, just Michael, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. No. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people fear when they've got a knighthood or something that, that they have that on their letterheads and but. No, I don't even mention it really. I think it's, uh, right. I think it's showing off a bit too much actually. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you draw obviously these days. Did you draw as a kid as well? I was brought up at Wangare Boys High School, which um, you know, virtually I was the only. I think I was the only um, fifth former that took art for school certificates. So it shows you how how um, unpopular art was really. Mm. Um, it was quite lonely and the only person in the arts in the art class. And you play but violin too, right? Was I that... play the violin as well. Um, I was more interested in the violin than than, than even art at that stage. Uh, that's, yeah. uh, I started playing the violin a little late, started at 11. And, uh, okay. <clears throat> to be any good at the violin, you basically really need to do well. Today, you need to start at four or five at the latest. Right. So, yeah. And then be pushed quite hard. Did you you wanted to pursue that, or you you were sort of encouraged to, to get very, into the family? I very much wanted to do that. So I left school to my parents' horror. So I said I want to become a, a concert violinist, which was probably a, quite a strange thing to do, mm. particularly in Wangarei, which is a very farming community. You know, a lot of rough, right. rough and tumble boys, and uh, I really was quite a misfit at school and was bullied a lot because of that. So. Uh, but after 18 months and after not winning the Herald, which uh, the Herald had a violin competition right, those okay. days, that was the, and after the not bar. winning that, uh, my parents uh, and my uncle decided that uh, my career um, had come to an end. And my, my dad used to be an Electrolux salesman. Okay. And when he married my mum, uh, he joined the business as manager as well. So mm. it was a very family orientated business. And I worked in that shop for 23 years thinking I had really... Um, no potential at doing anything really, which mm. is very interesting, isn't it? Really. Yeah. And what was the turning point that that led you to strike out on your yeah. on your own? When the house burnt down, we built a beautiful house that took two years to build. When that went burnt down that night, I, I realised. Well, I could see all my past life like you were on a tape that you were fast spooling, you know, mm. and you could just see right from a child right to that stage. And I just suddenly woke me up. You you haven't faced the fact that you should be making an approach to your uncle to buy that business. And if he won't sell, then you need to open up by yourself. Yeah. 
And the fire was the catalyst that made me write down that night on a piece of paper that I was going to uh, to do that. It was and like a clean slate or something. A was like, clean this is slate, the, this literally. Is the, the most difficult thing one has in life to do is to make the first move, you know, in a, in a and and breaking away from what you're supposed to be doing in convention mm. and convention and and just sort of throwing yourself into a new life. So here we were, the two of us with our two children. Uh, with basically nothing. I mm. managed to snatch my violin out from the, the house fire, but wow. basically that's all we had that night. But however, where there was a will away, and within um, a few months I, I found a backer, uh, that, uh, and they put up the money, and um, I was able to make a bid for my uncle's business, but my uncle didn't sell to me. So uh, there was, you know, either do I go back mm. and work for him for another 20 or 30 years? No, I had to, I had to, yeah. to move. So we, we moved and started uh, Michael Hill Jeweler, and that was uh, 1979. And uh, I thought if I owned three shops, I'd have so much money, I wouldn't know what to do with. And, uh, was you know, there I, an element I, of trying to prove your family, to prove to your family that you could do it, or prove to, you know, people who had bullied yes. you as a kid? Or well, that? there was a lot of having to prove to myself as well as that, really, because, uh, but the thing is, <clears throat> I, I was scared of facing reality, but the thing is that, there was nothing in the reality at all, except my mind was in the way. Mm. So as soon as I could remove the the, the, the mind and clear my mind, uh, transcendental meditation helped an awful lot, I might add, too, which wow, I've learned okay. at this stage, because what I've, I've discovered was that my I had a, um, uh, my little voice would be talking to me all the while, and a lot of that would be very negative, so it'd be a lot of negative self-talk. Mm. And I'd listen to that voice. I think most people do. Listen yeah. to that voice and obey the instructions. But once the house fire and learning to meditate, which meant that I was able to quieten down my mind, mm. that I wouldn't listen to the, to the self-talk, I was able to create um, a vision for my path forward. Yeah. And that was a big turning point. started Michael yes, Hill Jeweler, yeah. what was it that you were doing differently to say your, what your uncle was doing? We were doing things r remarkably different. First of all, doorways were very, just a, like a small door, just like in the entrance of this boat here, a little small doorway. And um, we had a very wide open doorway, nearly as wide as the shop, with two very simple windows, probably like three or four or five items in the window, okay. beautifully displayed. Uh, even at Easter, like we'd have uh, live chickens in the window running around and, you know, people were gravitated to look every week at what we had in the window. Mm. And those things were so beautiful and the doorway was so big that you just automatically gravitated inside the shop. Right. So it was... Uh, it was uh, I've never uh, thought about that doorway thing before. It was a really very interesting. And then we specialised. We only sold jewellery and watches. We didn't sell all the other things. I mean, my uncle was selling cuckoo clocks, silverware, Dresden figure, you name it. There was everything, everything you could buy that was in a jewellery thing was in that shop. But we 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 just specialised right. and, and kept it very simple. Well. Kept it very simple, yeah. which the money was mainly in, you know, the the diamond rings and the jewellery. Just was, hone in on the. On the, the hone. And yeah. no one had actually really done that, so it was. Uh, and then of course I went on the television and fronted my own adverts. Well, yeah. that when there was only one television station, then TV One, and I mean. Yeah, that was just went like crazy. I'm really putting the heat on prices this Christmas. I can't carry on selling jewellery below cost. <laughs> Stop! All right, but only till Sunday. <laughs> Gold, silver, silver, chain, chain, sale, sale. I wanted to ask you actually how much like, you being part of the brand was, was part of the success as well. So when we first went on, I, I would, would just talk mainly about the jewellery and then I'd say... Michael Hill. But then there was an English guy who was um, at Avalon who was doing the film. And he said, look, I think it would be better if you called yourself Michael Hill Jeweler. So I, I worked on that and I quite liked the idea of the pauses, which I started to develop. And it became quite distinct. Mm. Uh, do you want me to do it for you? Please okay, do it, yeah. Okay, hello. So, uh, so I would always introduce myself as, hello, Michael Hill Jeweler. 
It's perfect. That's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. So it, it became such a, uh, I had an enormous following in those days. In fact, actually, they did a survey. And the only person that had more recognition uh, was mm. the prime minister. So that was pretty scary. I, yeah. couldn't, I couldn't walk outside without everybody knowing me and yelling, good day, Mike. And it, it became quite embarrassing, actually. It really was. <laughs> so people will obviously know you as, as Michael Hill jeweler, but, but you're also Michael Hill cartoonist. I brought a copy of your book along here today, Catch Thank and Release, you. and I've got a couple of drawings that I thought maybe I could, I could point out to you and I'd be yeah. interested to, to hear you talk about them. This one, I really enjoyed this, this, this one here. This is like oh, the one life that drawing. you've done in, um, in Spain. It was in a, 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 in, a, in a security area where they had all these um, boats which were being repaired, and the time sort of went on me, and I, I, you, you actually can completely lose yourself in these, in these drawings. And the, uh, uh, and then suddenly I realised uh, I'd finished and I packed up my, my gear and I look around and suddenly I realised that I was in a complete, with huge security gates and everything, it was completely closed. Oh, they'd locked up the yard. They'd locked up completely and I thought, my goodness, how do I get out of here? <laughs> so uh, fortunately I had a phone, but I think that's the interesting part about drawing, uh, that you can get so engrossed on it that you... Um, you're in a different world, which mm. is which is I'm I'm really enjoying, and I bet you find the same thing. Yeah, I think that's a big part of the appeal is is that that sense of being able to yeah. sort of dive into dive yeah. into something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I really love the, this whole sequence of the book too, where you're drawing all these sort of battle characters. I love these guys with the arrows <laughs> through their helmets. Made me laugh, and this guy picking his nose is very funny. <laughs> yes, no, there's there's a quite a bit of um, madness. A lot of these, um, as I say, are done spontaneously. I do them on vomit bags on aeroplanes. I do them um, in, if, a, if a board meeting's becoming a little laborious, I, I will start doodling on the board papers. Yeah, which is interesting because the next one I was going to say is this, the, the, you draw lots of people playing violin and I think your passion for it yes. comes through. Like you say, playing with gusto there, the, <laughs> the movement in there, they're really lively drawings, <laughs> yes, I feel yes, like. Yes, yes. No, well, a, a violinist who's uh, free is, 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 is full of movement. Mm. A violinist who's stiff um, and rigid um, plays a stiff and the music comes across stiff. It's a funny thing about music, that to bring the best music out is very interesting. One of our winners of our competition, who produces an enormous this is the tone. Michael um, Hill Violin Competition, right? You're a sponsor. Yeah. Of, yes, that's, yeah. that, that's right. Uh, the Michael Hill International Violin Competition. Mm. And a, a past winner, Feng Ning, he's an amazing young man. Uh, I said, how do you get such an enormous tone? And he said, because his tone is so much bigger than anybody else. And he said, uh, the, the secret of getting a big tone is to be, for the body has to be 100% relaxed. Huh. Any tension mm. uh, disturbs the, the tone. Isn't that interesting, yeah, really? Yeah, that's so interesting. Mm. I wonder if drawing's like that sometimes, too. Like, I often find on a day that I'm not drawing well is when I'm sort of tensed up or something. It's very, very, very true. It's one more that I wanted to show, yeah. just because it made me laugh, that I love that there's some cheeky drawings in here, too. I love this one with the guy. Oh, yes, on the <laughs> toilet. The toilet. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is... Uh, yeah, um, we all need to have a, <laughs> a bell moment. We probably should have one at least twice a day, really. Um, uh, we need to keep pushing things through because otherwise it all accumulates. So you do a weekly cartoon for the for the mountain scene. I do, yeah. I do, and I'm really enjoying it. I really am enjoying it immensely. I'm finding it so much fun. Yeah. And of course, I can I can touch things that I like. Um, are they sort of topical cartoons? Are they, they are. Yeah. Like I mean, uh, uh, one of the ones I've done there is the airport has become unbelievably busy, and uh, the queues uh, probably bigger than in Shanghai. Forget it. It's insane. It really is. And there's another one on rabbits because we've got plagues of rabbits, my goodness, rabbits okay. love down there, so all these things are quite, uh, <coughs> but I have to be careful because I don't want to, uh, it's not for me to make, so I leave them completely open with no statements. It's the first time I think I've ever met a cartoonist who has a, has a boat like this. Thank you. They obviously you. Don't, don't have to be drawing. What, what is it that, that, that sort of compels you to draw, do you think? Well, I think it's always, um, I always uh, 
I can't really sit still and, and I like something to do and I always like a challenge. The thing is about cartoons, which is interesting, and uh, these are probably a little bit more realism than what we're doing, but a, a character or a cartoon actually um, has so much um, depth of feeling, whereas the spoken word, I yeah. mean, it's it's quite literal and you, you can subtly, you, you understand it straight away. Right. But with a cartoon, it can have many meanings. So yeah. it, it, there's so much depth to it. And I think they have also an enormous amount of appeal because people gravitate towards the simplicity of them and yeah. the uniqueness of them. Do you think that you could sell, in the same, I'm interested too, in the, the difference between the sort of jewellery world and the drawing world. Yes. You know, a ring's worth thousands of dollars, but, yes. but, but do you think creative pursuits are sort of undervalued sometimes? I, I think creativity can uh, produce surprising results, but there's definitely another book or two in me. I yeah. mean, this is my fourth book. Do you think book, you can sell first... some drawings as well as you can sell <laughs> There'll certainly be another one, and I have a feeling there's a, a, a good um, call for a, a children's book, uh, a colouring book, and also a, uh, a super yacht cookbook, I think, would be an interesting one as well, because I, sure. I, I love, healthy, love healthy recipes. So okay. who knows where it all ends cool. up. Okay. I'm fascinated to know if you feel like your life would have turned out differently if you had pursued a sort of a creative career from the beginning? It, it probably would have, but I don't think it could have been much more exciting than what it is. And in mm. fact, uh, I, I wouldn't have changed. When I look back, I, I don't want to change anything really. Yeah. And the thing is, it's never too late to pursue your goals. I mean, Frank Lloyd Wright, who was one of the greatest architects of all time, um, was designing some of his best works when he was in his 90s. And uh, Stradivarius was also made a violin. I've seen when he was 92, I've seen a violin he made which is extraordinary. So, you know, the thing is, never give up. Always pursue your dreams and always have another Everest to climb. So if you've climbed Everest, try and find another side to climb it on a more difficult peak. So yeah. you've never arrived. There's always another mountain. Somewhere else so to go. So keep pushing. Do you think that, that the money that you've made in your life has changed who you are, do you think? I think money doesn't bring happiness, but certainly money doesn't bring unhappiness. It's a, a, so it's, it's got nothing to do with the money. But I think money is, um, it's better to have it than not have it. And uh, it's also nice to give it away. And um, I'm enjoying... Um, particularly giving it out to charities and different things. And, uh, and, and when you give away, you get back twice as much. So uh, my, my, main, my main thing that gives me much pleasure is particularly in the, in the business, like there's the boat and my golf course and the violin and the, and, and the Michael Hill jewellery business, is taking people that others think have got nothing and turning them into stars. And that gives me a real thrill in life. Mm. It's the ordinary bloke that a lot of people sort of think, no, they're no bloody good. And I like taking those people and proving them all wrong. Mm. And that gives me a great thrill. Yeah. Because anyone can do it as long as they've got the enthusiasm and the spark to want to do it. Yeah. You talk, talked about doing hands, and my hands are bloody diabolical on this one. So oh, my just, hands are not great on this one. Either. No, it just shows you. Isn't it? So, uh, yeah. thing. Are you ready to ready to show? Okay. All okay. right. Okay. All right. So here you are. This is your drawing. Your drawing portrait there. Oh, that's quite good. That's very simple. I love it. And you, you've done that very well. That, that's miles better than mine. That's a little, <laughs> yeah, okay. no, mine, mine's a bit too stiff. But there you go. Idea. <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> I like that. Is that the jeweler's eyepiece or yeah, my eyes bulging? Yeah, you've got the jeweler's eyepiece there. Oh, that's, that's right. Great. Yeah, that's I right. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. That was really well fun. Done. It was really, thank you. really, really nice to well chat. Well done. Very nice good. To draw together. And Yours are seriously good. Oh, thank you very much.
Hello, Michael Hill, cartoonist.